Welcome back, friends. Dan Vega here, and I just got done wrapping up another episode of the Spring Office Hours podcast with my friend Deshaun. If you're new and haven't heard about that yet, I will go ahead and leave a link to that here and in the description below. But today we had a great conversation about getting started with Olama in spring. And so I thought I'd take what we've talked about in that hour and condense it down to a shorter video and a little bit more of a tutorial. So here I am on olama.com. That's O-L-L-A-M-A.com. Olama is used to get up and running with large language models locally. So why would you want to run a LLM on your local development laptop, for instance? Well, Let's talk about some of the use cases that we hear our customers talking to us about. And that is, hey, we are an organization and we have some private documentation, uh, some private PDFs, some private Excel sheets, whatever it is. We have private information that we do not want to share with the large language models out in the public like OpenAI's GPT-4 or Google Gemini or insert other LLM here, right? So that's one reason. Two, there is a cost uh, occurred when you go ahead and call these public LLMs. Uh, depending on what you're doing with this, uh, what scale you're talking about, this could cost a lot of money. So being able to run an open source model uh, might help you alleviate some of that cost. So those are two reasons, not the exhaustive list of why you would want to, but two pretty good ones, right? Security and cost. So Alama allows you to run open source large language models right on a machine. And we can do it right on our development laptops. Now, not all of them. We would need some pretty beefy machines to be able to run some of these. But uh, Olama allows us to do this. So let's talk about Olama first, uh, run through this, and then we'll talk about how it fits into Spring. To get started, you'll want to go ahead and download Olama. Uh, there's support for Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. Uh, I've gone ahead and downloaded this for Mac OS. There was just a couple of quick things that you needed to do. Uh, once you do that, you basically have a CLI tool that you can use with Olama. Next, you have to figure out what model you're going to use with Olama. So if you go over to models, uh, there will be a list of models, one of which is now the uh, LLM or Llama 3.1. This came out of Meta last week. Uh, they had some really great, exciting news uh, introducing Llama 3.1, our most capable models to date. Uh, they actually released three of them, the 8B, 70B, and 5, 405B. Um, there's some key takeaways in here. I'm not going to go through this uh, entire blog post, but you should. You can. Uh, Meta is committed to openly accessible AI. Uh, read Mark Zuckerberg's letter detailing why open source is good for developers, good for Meta, and good for the world. So this is really cool to see them promoting uh, open source AI. Uh, bringing open intelligence to all our latest models. Uh, we've expanded the context link to 128,000, uh, which is really good. Support across eight languages, uh, including Llama 3.1, 405B, the first frontier level open source AI model. So again, I'll let you go through this uh, blog post. I'll, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But once you have a model that you want to use, there's a whole list here, so you can kind of pick one based on your needs. Uh, but I'm going to use Llama 3.1. If you look at this drop down, there's a few different models that you can choose from. You can see the size here. Now, this is going to be important because this is the size it's going to take to download it onto your local machine. The 8B model is only 4.7 gigabytes, while the 70B is 40 gigabytes, and the 405B is 231 gigabytes. So that is important. Uh, then you're going to need uh, a certain amount of uh, you know, disk space and uh, memory, and you don't need GPUs to run this, but if you get into some of these larger models, it's probably going to really help out. So I want to run uh, just the 8B. You can see I get this command here, Olama run, Olama 3.1, um, and then you see that it, it specifies the 8B one. So once you do that, uh, you can go in to your command line tool. So I would pop open terminal here. I would run that, and it would basically say, if I haven't downloaded it yet, it would go ahead and download it. So I can say, uh, I can run that now, and it's basically going to um, see that we have that, uh, pulls it, uh, removing any unused layers, and then we get into, hey, send us a message. So now I'm talking to an LM locally. I can say, tell me a 
good dad joke about dogs. I like a good dad joke. Uh, why did the dog go to the vet? Because he was feeling rough. I love it. Love it. So now we can start to use this LLM locally. We're not sending our documents. I can go ahead and turn my Wi-Fi off, and this is still going to work. We're not talking to one of these public LLMs. So this is cool. Uh, some people may not want to work with the uh, command line. Maybe you want to use uh, a user interface that you're used to using, something like ChatGBT, right? Uh, for that, I found this really great uh, project called the Open Web UI. So I'll leave a link to this in the description below. But as you can see, it gives us this very kind of familiar chat GPT interface. And what this also allows you to do is upload your own documents. So if you want to test out RAG, uh, test out being able to provide more information in the context, this is going to uh, really help you out. I love this. Um, I love doing this. I will make a separate video on getting started with web UI for a llama, for spring. Um, but uh, that is something you can go ahead and check out. And as long as you have Docker installed, it's very easy to install. I just ran this. Uh, if Olama is on your computer, use this command. I just ran this Docker command. I now have a container running with that on it. All right, now that we have Olama running, we've downloaded a model that we can use locally. Let's talk about using that as part of our Spring project uh, with Spring AI. So I'm over at start.spring.io. I'm going to choose Java Maven, the latest version of Spring Boot, which at this time is 3.3.2. I will go ahead and say my group is dev.danvega. Uh, our artifact is, let's call it llama3. Let's say llama3.1 uh, because I think I have a llama3 project. And I'll go ahead and remove that. I have Java 22. And then it's time to add some dependencies. I'm just going to choose Spring Web. And then I'll come in here and choose Olama as the LLM. Again, this is the provider. I can go ahead and pick any one of the models that I want to use with Olama. With that in place, I can go ahead and generate this project. I will download a zip. I can go ahead and open it up in my favorite IDE, which is IntelliJ's Ultimate Edition. But feel free to use whatever text editor or IDE you're most productive in. With that, let's write some code. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up our palm.xml, and I'm going to change the version of Spring AI. Currently, it defaults to M1. I'm going to change this to snapshot. Uh, there's a couple reasons. I'll leave a link to the blog post uh, for both Olama and Spring AI. But Olama recently introduced uh, support for tools or function calls. And Spring AI immediately added support for that, which is in the snapshot version. Now, to use the snapshot version, you're going to need to use the snapshot repository. So uh, I'll also go ahead down here and add that in. With that in place, I should be able to reload our Maven changes here, and we're now using the snapshot version. So when we get started with Spring AI, we pick our uh, LLM provider. In this case, we're using Olama. We picked that from the starter. And if we go in here, we'll see that we have the Spring AI Olama Spring Boot starter. Now, we told you you could include a whole bunch of different uh, uh, large language models. Uh, we want to use the uh, Llama 3.1, the new one from Meta that was open source. And to do so, we got to be specific. We got to tell it which model we're using. Uh, if you look at the documentation for Spring AI and the Llama support, it actually defaults to Mistral. So unless you're using Mistral, you need to come in here and change this. So we'll say um, Llama chat model, and then we got to say uh, Llama 3.1. So with that in place, we should be able to start our applications without error. Um, it looks like we're OK. Everything started. That's good. Now, the great thing about this is if you've seen a tutorial on my channel about Spring AI before, we've used a lot of examples with OpenAI's GPT-4, GPT-4.0. The code does not change from what we were using there. And that's the exciting part. We can have the same code use these different LLM providers to go ahead and test out the responses to see which ones will work with the use cases that we're trying to use it for. So I'm going to do a couple of things. The first is I'm just going to create a chat controller. 
and we're going to do a very simple, boring exercise here, but it's going to show off that we can talk to our local model. So I'm going to create a REST controller. I'm going to create a git mapping for the root, and we're going to say public string um, joke. Again, I know you're tired of the jokes, but now we need to return something here. So to do so, we're going to get a private final chat client uh, check client. And we'll go ahead and get this through constructor injection. We'll say the builder, and this is build. So now that we have a chat client, we can say chat client dot prompt dot user. So this is the user uh, message that we're going to send to our LLM. And we are going to say, please tell me a dad joke about computers, right? Um, let's see there. And then we're going to make a call to the LLM. And what we want to get back is just simply a string. So with this in place, I should be able to go ahead and rerun this application. And I can go over to my terminal, and I'm using a little client called HTTPIE that will allow me to make a HTTP call. You could use, if you're using IntelliJ's Ultimate Edition here, like I am, you can use the uh, HTTP client that's baked in. You could use something like Postman. You can use something like curl. I like HTTPIE. It's just like curl, but a little bit more readable. So all this does is says, I want to make a call to localhost 8080. And again, that's our endpoint. And so if we make that call, we should get back a joke from the LLM. And that was pretty quick. Uh, why did the computer go to the doctor? Wait for it. Because it had a virus. Hope that one booted up some laughter in you. Love it. So I love the jokes. Um, these are good. That was a lot of fun. But anything we're doing with uh, the examples that we talked about with something like OpenAI, we can now do with a locally running LLM. And again, we're using the newest one from Meta, the uh, Llama 3.1. But there are a whole bunch of different models that you can choose from based on what you're trying to do. So I encourage you to go ahead and uh, try some different models and see what the responses are like. Now, I'm going to copy some code. We're not going to write this because I've done this in a previous video. I will link to that in the description below. But we are going to add a function call here. So the classic example is I have this city controller, and if I ask it a, a question about a city, um, so in my, you know, right now we could say, what is the, what is the, where are the 2024 Olympics? And if it had that information, it would say Paris, France. But what if I said, what is the weather currently like in Paris, France? It's not going to understand what that is. It doesn't have access to real-time data. So what we can do is we can add function calls. So we can define a function that can get the current weather, and then we can tell the LM about it so that when it goes to answer your question or your prompt, if it sees something that I can't answer because I have no idea, I don't have access to real-time data, but I see that you provided me one of these function names that could probably answer that question for me, uh, go ahead and send this back to you. You call that and pass that along as context to me. So the way this works is we just define um, this weather service that is going to use um, the weather API, the REST API over at weatherapi.com. It will go through and make a call out to that service and uh, turn that into a response and then gives all this as context to the LLM. Uh, so we have a function configuration that defines it. Here's a description. This helps the LLM understand like when it can make this function call to you. Um, and then it defines a request and a response. And this is the name of the bean. So that is what we provide uh, when we go ahead and set a default function. So again, I've done this in another video. If you want to watch this in depth and how we built this, uh, go ahead and check that out. But I want to run this here, and I'm not going to change any code. The only other thing that I'll need is in my application.properties, uh, I do have a couple weather properties. So if you're going to use this, you'll need to get a weather API key from that particular site and uh, store it in an environment variable or just put it in here if you want. But remember, do not push that to get. 
So here's my endpoint, here's my key. I've set that as an environment variable. Let's go ahead and restart this. And uh, nope, so now, oh, we gotta do one more thing. So if we go back to our application, uh, we need to enable those configuration properties. So I would say something like enable uh, configuration properties and we'll pass in the weather configuration properties dot class. And now this should work. Let's see if that does it. Okay, so I'll go back to my terminal and I can say something like HTTPIE uh, localhost 8080 slash cities. What is the message that I'm passing in? I want to say what is the current weather like in Paris, France? Okay. And again, uh, oh, we have an error. Houston, we have a problem. Let's see what this is like. Uh, oh, my API key has been uh, disabled. So let me do something off screen and fix that. Okay, I'm gonna restart it. I think I just had the wrong key in the environment variable. So we'll go ahead and try that again. And cool. The current weather in Paris, France is sunny with a temperature of 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Celsius, and a humidity of 62%. Uh, the wind speed is approximately 4.9. Again, this is all information that we get back from the weather API, but the LLM is responsible for generating that response. So the key part for this is Olama just added support for function calling and Spring AI immediately added it. So hats off to the Spring AI team for getting this in there. Uh, that was really good to see. And again, I didn't change anything from the same example that I used with uh, OpenAI. And that for me is really powerful, being able to take this code and test it out on different LLMs. In this case, the one we are running locally. So hey, that is Olama. That is going ahead and using one of the new open source models like Llama 3.1 and how to get started with it in Spring AI. Oh, it's so easy to use, so easy to do, and a lot of fun. So friends, I hope you learned something new today. If you did and you found value in this, you know what time it is. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding, friends. Hey.